I'm with Father Severinus from Uganda. You're very welcome to Ireland, Father. Thanks so much. Is this your first visit to Ireland? No, actually, I'm a student here. Ah. I've been here for two years. You've been here for two years. Yes. And, and how do you find it in Ireland? Do you like Ireland? I like Ireland, apart from the weather, <laughs> which is a bit extraordinarily different from ours. Okay. Yes. In Uganda, um, the church in Uganda currently, what's, what's the, the situation there uh, in Uganda? Is the church flourishing? In the church, Catholic church? The Catholic church, yes. I can say it is flourishing because we are more than 40% of the whole population. More than 40%. Yes. Uh -huh. And vocations to the priesthood? And vocations are relatively higher than here, although we still need more priests in the field. Yeah. But uh, we are encouraged by the vocations that we have. Okay. For example, I think we have uh, more than 500 major seminarians for philosophy and theology mm -hmm. in the whole country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I remember uh, a couple of years ago um, visiting Africa, uh, not Uganda, uh, but I've, I found on, on many occasions that people had to travel long distances to Mass on a Sunday. Is that's that the right, case in right. Uganda? It is the case, and in fact, some don't have Mass every Sunday. Uh -huh. Because you find that in a parish where there are two priests, there are uh, several outstations, sub-parishes. Of course. And they can't get a priest for Mass. Ah, so see. we are helped by catechists who are trained to lead Sunday services. I see. And some other local churches in the villages, they are Eucharistic centers. So we have extraordinary ministers who help to distribute Holy Communion for people on Sundays. Do but some others don't get that opportunity. Don't get that opportunity. They wait for a priest maybe after a month or I two see. months. Do you have permanent deacons in Uganda? We don't have that yet. No. Yes. Do you think that's something that might come or maybe it's not necessary? Not that it is not necessary. Maybe we have not reached that level. Yes, that level yes. But uh, we might uh, come to it also, okay. as it is done in other several parts of the world. What um, are your hopes? for the Catholic Church for the future uh, as a priest? As a priest, I think the Catholic Church it still has hope as long as it is, I say, responsible and obedient to the commandments of the Lord. And he promised that I will be with you until the end of time. As long as we are there, we are obedient to him, the Lord is still there and the church will remain there. Yes. As we do these interviews, um, there's one question that we ask everybody, and that's in relation to the fact that we're now living in a world that's um, very materialistic, very individualistic. Um, uh, it's, it's disconnected in many ways uh, from religion. Um, in that sort of scenario, uh, how do you see the challenge that there is there for, the, for leadership within the church? Even in, you know, in the communities, in the parishes, as priests, they are priest leaders. Yes. Do you, there are challenges there. How do you see those challenges? I think the challenges are there. We cannot uh, say they are not there, they are there. Everyone sees that. But I think uh, as the way forward, it's a matter of involving mm -hmm. all the members of the church especially the later who are involved in those other areas, economic and uh, administrative and other areas, mm -hmm. if we, are, we get involved with them, we get in touch with them, I think we shall see how to, together we can handle this situation. Please God. Yes. Thank you very much, Father, no for problem. talking to no us. Problem. Thank you. Thank you.